Hi all. Welcome to Nitish Sharma Simplified Learning. It's not a regular day in office for network engineers Matt, Maria and Jeff as they have a job to complete which is having strict deadlines. This network team is tasked to do massive configurations on thousands of devices and also to carry out the iOS upgrades. With the team of three people, it looks impossible for them to finish the job on time and they are worried about it. Since Maria had traditional networking knowledge plus network automation skill set, she brings a solution to the table in the name of Cisco DevNet. When Maria proposes the solution to leverage network automation tools and techniques to achieve this task in a single go, Matt and Jeff are relieved. This added skill set of Maria has become feather in the cap for her. But Matt and Jeff have few questions which they pose it to Maria. Like what is DevNet? Do infra engineers need to learn DevNet? Is it easy to learn DevNet? Do we need to learn programming to learn DevNet? For Matt and Jeff, DevNet has been the elephant in the room. For many of us, DevNet word has crossed our mind, but we have never thought of approaching it as it involves programming. Most of us infra engineers fear that programming is complex and we try to stay away from it. But those days are gone when we had programming languages with complex syntax and structures. With Python, programming has become very easy and simple Python is used extensively in automation. Now, let us take an example to understand network automation by comparing network systems to automobile systems. For over 30 years, the industry has taught the network engineers that a network is a collection of devices such as routers, switches, firewalls, wireless components, etc. With the advent of network controllers, there is a shift in the mindset to view network as a holistic system instead of looking at it as separate devices. Much like operating a car from the driver's seat rather than trying to manage the car from all the pieces and components of which it is composed of, just like the one shown in this picture. Network controllers split role and functionality from one another. This is often is referred to as control plane and data plane. The control plane is where all the instructions on a device leave, example, routing protocols, configuring telnet, ACLs, etc. The data plane is where all the data traffic flows. Having a controller to sit on top of the rest of the devices makes it to operate the network as a whole from a centralized management point. Controller offers the ability to manage a network as a system rather than looking at it as router switches, which requires manual policy changes and device by device configurations. CLI was not designed to make massive configuration changes to multiple devices at the same time. Traditional methods of managing and maintaining the network aren't sufficient to keep up with the pace and demands of the networks of today. Protocols like NetConf, RESTConf are used to automate the network which gives more flexibility than traditional CLI based systems. With this context, now let us see what is Cisco DevNet. Cisco DevNet provides a platform and resources for building applications, automation scripts and integrations that leverage Cisco's networking infrastructure and services. Just like DevOps, Cisco DevNet aims to bridge the gap between network engineering and software development, enabling network professionals to become network developers by leveraging programmability and automation in the Cisco powered networks. This is not a software development course or it does not test Python knowledge like how good you know the syntax, libraries, functions and all. In this course, we will learn about software development models and techniques and also we would be developing scripts and code to automate network tasks. We are combining software development principles with Python and networking skills. Together, it applies to enterprise network, DC, Meraki, DNA centers, Firepower, Webex, etc. Software development was stressful for network engineers but not anymore with Cisco DevNet. This course was designed for developers but 
Network engineers are pursuing it more than the software folks due to its ease of learning. Now let us look at the benefits of Cisco DevNet. There are many benefits of learning Cisco DevNet, but let us look at the four important benefits of it. Network automation. Cisco DevNet provides resources and tools for network automation, allowing organizations to automate repetitive network tasks and workflows. When you automate things that you already know and you are working day in, day out, it becomes more exciting and interesting. The second benefit is programmability. DevNet empowers network professionals to leverage network programmability and software-driven techniques to create and manage network infrastructures. The third one is access to Cisco APIs. API play a crucial role in network automation by enabling communication and interaction between different software systems and devices. Cisco DevNet provides access to a wide range of Cisco APIs. This helps to interact Cisco networking equipments, services, and softwares. Its example is similar to the network interfaces in Cisco devices, where interfaces are used to connect other devices. Similarly, APIs in software are software interfaces used to connect to connect between applications and softwares. Let us look at the fourth benefit, that is innovation and problem solving. DevNet encourages innovation by enabling network engineers to create new network applications and services. DevNet also provides resources and tools to solve complex network challenges. Certification path with Cisco DevNet. Just like any other technology stream in Cisco, DevNet also has certification to validate DevNet skills. Cisco certifications are gold standards in IT training. DevNet also has associate, professional, and expert level of trainings. This course is focused on associate level. DevNet associate is entry level certificate. In this course, we would be learning DevOps concepts, network automation techniques, software models, Python, APIs, containers, version control softwares like Git, GitHub, and then Ansible, etc. DevNet is a vast subject. And in order to certify as DevNet professional, we need to pass one core exam and one concentration exam. In the concentration exam, we have Enterprise Auto, Collaboration Auto, Data Center Auto, and others. If we pass one of the dev core and any one of the concentration exam, then we would be certified as CCNP DevNet. In case if we pass dev core, Enterprise Auto, and one more certificate that is Enterprise Core, that is NCore, then we would be certified as CCNP Enterprise and CCNP DevNet. And for expert level, we need to clear one qualifying exam that is score and one lab exam. These DevNet certifications is similar to any other certification in Cisco. CCNA DevNet exam number is 200901. Cost of the exam is around 300 US dollars. Length of exam is 120 minutes, which consists of multiple choices, roughly 100 questions and 800 to 850 is the score to pass out of 1000. Now let us look into the topics of CCNA DevNet. CCNA DevNet has five important topics or the five main topics which includes 20% of understanding and using APIs, 15% of Cisco platforms and development, 15% of application deployment and security, 20% of infrastructure and automation, 15% of network fundamentals. Now let us break down these topics one by one. 
first topic is software development and design in this section we would be learning xml json yaml and also we would be learning about software development models and practices fundamentals of python and linux as well i will take a sample code which is for editing the configuration of the cisco ios router with this example i will introduce you to few terminologies related to cisco devnet the first line of the code is used to import the netconf library netconf is a network management protocol used for configuring and managing network devices for example this protocol can connect to a device and retrieve device info write info into the device just like it is doing in this program a library is a collection of pre-written and reusable code that can be used to perform common task the beauty about python is we don't write a code for everything there are predefined codes for some tasks like telnet or ssh etc we have code written already we just need to call it using statements like import the only thing we should be aware of is the library names like nc client nc client is the library name for netconf in this first line manager is a function that is again a small piece of code within nc client library functions are used to do a specific task and get the output these are block of codes within the library in our case manager is a function within the nc client library so with the first line of code we downloaded the netconf library the next block of the code is used to define device info and netconf parameters netconf communicates at port 830 next we have the xml part of the code XML is a data structuring language. It is used to arrange data in a hierarchical format and human readable format. It is used for transporting data to the device, retrieving it and modifying it. But remember, XML itself is not a communication protocol but a data format. Netconf is a protocol that is used to connect to the device, whereas XML is just used for transferring the data. XML has parent child tags. For example, if I want to define this piece of data in the XML format, it looks like this. So we need to so we need to open and close tags in each uh, data that is there. So this is the parent tag that is config and we have child tags like interfaces, name and description. So there is an open tag like this and there is a close tag with a backslash in between we have the data that is you that is to be used so the last part of the code is again a netconf code that is used to apply configuration using edit config operation once it edits the config into the device it prints the output as well with the print function Things to remember in this program is what library to import, data to be edited and little bit of logic to connect to the device. Is it not simple? It is just like writing a letter to someone. Only one thing we need to remember is the context and subject of it. Let us recap quickly what we have just learned. Python is the coding language used here which has set of instructions. Netconf protocol is used to connect to the device. XML is the data structuring language that is used to send the data. Yang is the data modeling language which we would be learning in this course. 
Throughout this course, we would be sharing the study materials, scripting guide and other documents and softwares. We would be explaining each line of the code in these guides for your ease. In the first section, we would also be learning about the version control software like Git. This is all about the first section in this course. In the second section, we would be learning about APIs, specifically the REST APIs. Just like in the web development, REST APIs use standard HTTP methods such as GET, POST, PUT and DELETE. Here we will also construct a Python program to call REST API. That's about this section. In the third section, we would be learning about YAM data model and its usage within network scripts. This section is most in interesting part of the course, I can say, as we would be utilizing tools and techniques on the devices that we daily work on like WebEx, Meraki, SD-WAN, ACIs and etc. Fourth section is application deployment and security. Here we would be learning about DevOps concepts like CI-CD pipelines, introduction to containers, Docker and also we will learn basic Linux commands required for directory navigation. We would be familiar with virtual machines but containers are new concept. Both technologies used to attain virtualization. Virtual machines are full-fledged virtual instances with a dedicated operating system running on a hypervisor unlike containers that share the host operating system. Containers are a form of virtualization that allows you to package application and all its dependencies like libraries, configuration files, system files, etc. together into a single unit called a container image. Let me show you a picture to give an idea of containers and virtual machines. Virtual machine has a hardware layer and on top of that a virtualization layer then a dedicated operating system like Windows or Linux for each application and then the files and libraries on top of it. But container on the other hand has a common operating system for all the application with container engine on top of the operating system and then system files and libraries. As I said before, both are used to attain virtualization but the way to achieve it is different. In the fifth section, we would be learning about model driven programmability, network automation concept and Ansible. And in the last section, we would be learning about network fundamentals. So this is all about the Cisco DevNet course, which has tons of knowledge required for new age network engineers. We are here to provide the comfort required for you to learn Cisco DevNet. In our initial example, we saw Maria making a difference in the team by using DevNet skills to automate existing infra. Don't let yourself behind with traditional concept like CLI based configuration and other old techniques. By learning this course, you would be introduced to new age networking skills and concepts which will keep you up to date with the technology. I hope this video was informative and useful. Have a nice day ahead. Thank you.